At 7.08 p.m. on Thursday, August 1st, 2024, day three of the pre-trial hearings for Richard Allen, the man accused of killing Liberty German and Abigail Williams in Delphi, Indiana, on February 13th, 2017, Special Prosecutor James Luttrell led a masterful direct of his state witness, Major Pat Cicero. Cicero respectfully and methodically testified as to blood stain and pattern analysis for this crime, including the movement at the scene of Libby and what he described as the upside down L blood pattern on the tree. Cicero is currently with the Laporte County Sheriff's Office and was chief of detectives prior to his current rank of major. He specializes in crime scene reconstruction forensic entomology, overall crime scene analysis. Cicero has been involved in setting standards for numerous courses in crime scene reconstruction. He's involved in many conferences on the specialized subject and teaches at the Indiana Law Enforcement Crime Scene Center and the National Forensic Academy in Tennessee. At the Forensic Academy in Tennessee, he conducts an intensive 10-week course in bloodstain pattern analysis for which he has 20 years experience. He has testified in more than 30 cases as an expert on the subject. On February 12, 2024, Cicero was requested to provide expert analysis for this case. He reviewed numerous crime scene pictures as taken by five to six different law enforcement investigators at the crime scene the post-mortem report, lab reports, diagrams, photos from both the crime scene and the autopsies on the girls. Luttrell entered all of this as state exhibits number 36 and 37 and requested it be kept under seal. Cicero went to the crime scene as well, accompanied by retired FBI agent Rich Davies, which we heard about in previous testimony. He took time to review and understand the crime scene. Cicero physically examined items of evidence, clothing discovered near Abbey. Without getting too graphic, Cicero conducted a review of the blood on the items from the crime scene. Luttrell enters exhibit number 30. It's an overall picture of the tree with the decedents in the background. There is blood stain on the ground, which he categorized as a pooling of blood and voluminous. There's a tree in the foreground. Luttrell enters exhibit number 31. It's a close-up of leaf litter with blood stains. Please note, at this point of Cicero's testimony, I observed defense attorney Jennifer Auger holding up pictures from the exhibit. I could see several trees and a large area of the leaf litter. Luttrell enters exhibit number 33. It's a close-up of a tree and there's blood stains on the more northern part of the tree. Luttrell enters exhibit number 34. Scaling out of the blood stain, upside down L shape. Cicero stated that the letter F is referenced frequently in the material of the investigation. Luttrell asked if it appeared to be a symbol F on the tree. Cicero responded, no, it appeared like an upside down L. Cicero indicated that the purpose of using enhanced digitization of blood stains was to view them easier. He understood why it said F, but what is missing is the second horizontal prong. Cicero agreed with Luttrell that it was a reddish or pinkish tint on the tree in the bark and that there was a visual distortion of what was on the tree. Please note, OJ held up the photo, which I was again able to view. There, what, there was what appeared to be a scientific ruler across the top and along the left side of the page beside the upside down L blood stain on the tree. Luttrell has Cicero look at exhibit number 36. It shows Abby and Libby. The left side of the photo has a large pooling of blood. He can clearly see discoloration to the west side of Abby and Libby. Cicero states that the northeastern part of the tree had an overall pattern that was 3.4 inches by 7 inches. Different patterns were noted. 
There were transfer blood stains. There was a quantity of six individual droplets. There was transfer stains to the left of the upside down L. Cicero indicated that the tree came in contact with another object and energy was applied to the blood to cause spatter. Spatter is typically one to four millimeters in size. In this case, the spatter is one to three millimeters in size. The vertical portion of the upside down L was caused by gravity. There was blood near the base of the tree, four feet from the base, two feet from the base, and a large pooling of blood. To the right, approximately four feet from the base, Cicero observed more transfer that was darker brown. It was red. A few feet to the west of Abby's foot, there was a pooling of blood. Luttrell asked if the other blood was in between the blood at the base of the tree and the pooling. Cicero described a quantity of two smaller pools that accumulated. They lacked drips or other descriptives. The areas were much smaller amongst the leaf litter. Luttrell asked Cicero about the analysis of the blood on Libby and if he studied the pictures and read the reports. Cicero stated that all of the blood originated from Libby. After he studied dozens of pictures, a brief overall description, he analyzed the tree, he analyzed the base of the tree, and he analyzed the large pool of blood. Cicero agreed that the only blood of Abby was immediately adjacent to her. Cicero shockingly testified that Libby was mobile at the time of her death. He observed transfer on the bottom of Libby's foot. Northeast of the tree, there was a large amount of blood. Libby's body was dragged through the pool and there was transfer to the back of her leg and calf. Libby was dragged through the large pool to her final resting place. Libby's left arm was left in a raised position, which was consistent with Libby being dragged. Libby was mobile and moving due to the indicators. At some point, Libby was in a sitting position because on her right thigh, there was a projected pattern and her blood was under pressure. The blood was ejected and subsequent, subsequent flow patterns came out. The injury itself had to be over the thigh as the flow pattern was down her leg and therefore Libby was most likely seated at the time. Libby was in the general location of where she was killed, but there was some movement. The blood stain on her face indicated that her head was turned at one point. There was pooling accumulation. Most movement of her upper torso was a movement of her head from her upper body being lifted up at one point. Blood is a fluid. Her face and chin had flow pattern. Libby had lots of blood on both hands and Cicero had seen this in his work hundreds of times. Given the wounds to her neck, her injuries were carotid arteries, and the jugular vein was compromised. There was lots of blood loss. Injuries to the neck and raising her hands was a natural reaction. Libby was mobile and the blood was flowing down her neck. Libby's arms and hands had voluminous amounts of blood. Abby did not have blood on her hands or sweatshirt. Luttrell asked if Abby was redressed after receiving the injuries. Cicero responded, no. Cicero testified that Abby had clothing on at the time of her injuries, a gray sports bra, a black bra, a hoodie, and a tank top. There was heavy saturation to the clothing. She was wearing clothes at the time of her murder. There would have been a lot of blood transfer to her clothing as she was being dressed, and there wasn't any. 
Cicero was asked if smaller sticks would assist in concealing the bodies, and Cicero responded yes, especially the large tree limb. Auger objected to this line of questioning from Luttrell and indicated that what someone may or may not have seen across the creek is not Cicero's area of expertise in blood. And Cicero was never at the crime scene location in February 2017. Auger indicated that Dr. Kaur can testify to this, and she thinks it would be complete speculation. Luttrell countered with the fact that it was not speculation at all. Cicero had observed dozens and dozens of photographs. He could see from the pictures and could see an advantage to using sticks to conceal since he had visited the crime scene. Please note, during this line of questioning, Alan was shaking his head no. Cicero indicated that he could clearly see across the river and see a path when he went there. He said yes, he believed the light-colored skin could be camouflaged across the creek with the sticks. Luttrell asked Cicero to describe the results of Cicero's experiments with measurements and blood on the tree. Cicero had law enforcement draw his blood and put in numerous vacuum containers to conduct experiments. Primarily, he typically uses animal blood to do these experiments, but due to time constraints, he used his own. OJ wanted to know if Cicero added coagulants to his blood samples, and he replied that he did not. OJ then asked about medications that Cicero was taking that would affect coagulation, and Cicero indicated that he took various medi medications, including hypertension medications, and they don't affect his coagulation. Cicero testified that blood has certain viscosity that appeals to physical laws and energy forces. Luttrell wanted to know if, in his opinion, Cicero thought that the blood pattern was painted or transferred onto the tree. The best explanation is that it was a transfer stain. It was not painted, Cicero testified. A handprint from a test subject was the most comparative. Cicero tried painting with fingers and also a stick. He didn't know if painting was a possibility, but he did concur that it was possible, yet it would have been very difficult. The person would have had to reapply several times to get the same volume that was on the tree and go back to the source to do so. The upside down L was most likely made by the palm of Libby's left hand. There was fingerprint roundness. It should be noted that one to one and a half inches to the right of the upside down L, there was another transfer stain. When crystal violet was applied to the stain, we used the digits portion of the thumb and that made a most accurate duplication of that stain. The edge of her thumb is most likely not straight on. This stain is consistent with Libby's left hand and her thumb hitting that portion of the tree. OJ, objection. Luttrell, the DNA report, Your Honor. OJ, the DNA report doesn't have Libby. Judge Gall, overruled. I understand. Luttrell, Liberty's blood came into contact with that tree. Would that explain all of the blood that you saw? Cicero responded that there was sensation cast off an inch away. He would expect to see directionality prior to contact, spatter out there in force. The craters were rough on that tree. Oje, we know somehow there is a pool. Cicero, there were three small pools and one very large one. Libby herself had three cuts. Oje, their hand would likely or possibly be covered in blood, the killer. Cicero, depends what his, the assailant's actions are. OJ, his hand? Cicero, I made a mistake. A hand. OJ, someone had blood on their hand. It was transferred to a tree. 
say as an example, Brad Holder? Did you do any other analysis on any other hand? Libby was five foot four. Your subject. Did they have a similar size to Libby's hand? Say, a similar hand size to Brad Holder? Cicero, I have no idea who that is. OJ, I can dip my hand in blood and drip it on the tree, correct? Cicero, yes. OJ, Libby was later moved? Cicero, yes. OJ, someone else moved her? Cicero responded, yes. OJ, she didn't move herself. Cicero replied, no. OJ, is it more difficult to move alive or dead or if they are fighting? Cicero, the distance of the large pooling area was 70 feet away, maybe? That is how far Libby was moved. You can actually look in the photographs. Her head and neck would have been in the vicinity of the large pooling. Her buttocks and leg dragged through the large pool. There was staining on the leaves and on the back of her leg. Blood ran down her eye, across her face and chin. Her head was turned to the left. That would not be consistent with the blood on her face. However, she was picked up because of gravity. A person that was limp would allow these patterns to occur. Oje, can you identify the flow pattern alterations on her body? not her face. Her head was positioned different. Cicero, blood would not flow up her chin and over her face. Her right cheek primarily had blood. Blood does not defy gravity. It ran on her chin. Luttrell enters under seal. Cicero, the left side of Abigail Williams' neck the blood was mostly on the hoodie. The flow patterns on Abby were not consistent with her final position. There's no conclusion to be made about Abby was completely nude on or about February 13th, 2017. OJ, she reads from a report. She could have had her gray and black bra on, her pink top on at the time. At some point, she was partially nude? Cicero, yes. Luttrell enters exhibit number 37, which is an aerial view with investigators and they're on a ladder. What percentage of Libby's body are covered by sticks? Cicero, maybe 3%? Please note, 3 or 30%? This number was unclear to me when I was taking my notes, but I be do believe that Cicero stated 3%. Luttrell. And Abby? Cicero. Similar. OJ. There were lots of leaves and sticks around to cover a body. There was a lot of chaos, right? It's impossible to recreate what happened, given the data. Cicero. Yes. OJ. Have you ever seen sticks on bodies before? Cicero, once. There was a grid or a pattern putting objects to cover the person. They built a bridge for other sticks using sticks and leaves without fully covering up the body. Luttrell, nothing further. OJ, have you seen bodies that were buried? Cicero, yes, I bury them and I dig them up at the university in Tennessee. It was 8.20 p.m. on day three, and this was the end of Major Cicero's testimony.